Welcome to Math for Game Developers, where this week we're going to t take the problem of physically simulating a few links in a chain of seaweed. Seaweed. Pretend that our seaweed gets modeled by uh, each link being a certain length, L. This is a very simple game, so it's not supposed to be photorealistic or anything. We just kind of want it to resemble seaweed and... So we're going to have each length here be L, and then we're going to physically simulate it so it looks like it's flowing around in the water. Um, and so let's just look at the simulation for an individual segment of this seaweed that I'll call S. And so let's see, what are our variables here? L, that is the ideal length that we want our seaweed segment to be. And S is a single segment. It's a vector that represents a single segment of seaweed. It's a vector that starts at the bottom of a segment and ends at the top of a segment. Now, we could do like this. We could do this formula right here. Uh, we have our length S and we want it to be length L. We have our segment S, we want it to be length L, so we multiply by L and divide by the length of S. Okay, and then that will be the new length of the segment to make sure that it's always our ideal length. But actually, we're not gonna do that. We're gonna take a slightly different approach. This approach would work, it would work fine, but we're gonna learn something new today um, and, and that will, mean that we have to take a different approach. We're gonna make a new function called g of s. All right, and I'm gonna set it to be a special thing. So let me just write this and then I'll explain what it means in a moment. 2l squared over length of s squared plus l squared, all right? So this is a special formula that will let us um, do physical simulation of this seaweed in a special way. So it has two advantages over the other formula. One is that it avoids the square root function. Here in the denominator we have the length of s, which as you know uh, is calculated by using a square root, but here this is also a length of s, but we can calculate it using s dot s, which is equal to length of s times length of s times cosine of zero, um, which is equal to length of s squared. So we avoid the square root operation, which makes it a little bit faster. But it's not perfect. It's not perfect. It doesn't get us the length of s unless the length of s is already equal to L exactly. Uh, let me rephrase that. It doesn't set the segment to be length L um, unless le the segment is already exactly a length of L. And let me show you what I mean. Let's assume that, picking a new color, let's assume that s is already length L then this g function okay then that's a little arrow oh i'm bad at drawing arrows then this g function is going to look like this the numerator stays the same but in the denominator we have length of s squared but that is l squared plus l squared and since what's inside these brackets is 2l squared over l squared plus l squared that is all equal to one. So this is equal to S, okay? So when S is already, the when the le length of S is already equal to L, then this function gives us the right result. It gives us a, a, a vector of length L. But what happens when the length of S is less than L, then Oh, that's a better arrow. Then g of s is equal to the same thing as before, except we'll put 2l squared in the numerator. 
But now the length of s is slightly less than l, so you'll have something a little bit smaller here in the denominator, a little bit smaller, which means this whole number will be a little bit bigger, which means that g of s is slightly bigger than s. And remember that s, it, so I'm sorry, the length of g of s is slightly bigger than the length of s, okay? Which, which is good because we want l, I'm sorry, we want s to be length l. And so if we run it through this function, it gets us slightly more there. And if we, if we say that it's slightly bigger than L, then we're gonna get the same thing, except the denominator is gonna be slightly larger instead of slightly smaller. And so we're gonna get a slightly smaller vector, okay? So let me just um, phrase that again, just so that we can under understand what's going on here. If we have a vector that it's the size we want it to be, it is equal to the ideal length, then everything is fine. This function doesn't change anything. If it's slightly less long than the ideal length, then this function will increase it to approach the ideal length. And if it's slightly longer, then it will decrease it to approach the ideal length. And so I'm gonna try and draw that in a picture so we can get a little bit better of an understanding here. Here's a graph. Okay, here is the function, I'll do it in this color. Here's the function that we are, it looks kind of something like this. And this is what happens. This, this is the line y equals x right here. And this is the function g of x. And you can see that these two lines have an intersection, okay? Um, when g of x is a little bit less than x, I should say g of s, s. When g of s is a little bit less than s, it pushes it this way. And when g of s is a little bit bigger than s, it pushes it that way. This has a name, it's called fixed point iteration. And when g of s is equal to x, it's called a fixed point. Any function when g of x is equal to x, that's called a fixed point. And it's useful in this case because it can help us simulate the seaweed. Um, and our method of doing that by just putting s into this function and getting a slightly better approximation out, that is what fixed point iteration does. And, and, and we've been doing it with this, uh, with this method. So, Fixed point iteration is pretty cool and useful. And there are a lot of situations where we can use it, but we have to know like, like what is the situation where we can and what is the situation where, where we can't. And there is a condition that you have to satisfy in order to be able to use fixed point iteration. And that is that it has to be a contraction mapping. So what does that mean? What is a contraction mapping? So here's my function. Okay, I'm gonna draw another graph here. Here's A, here's B, here's, ah, uh, this is not to scale, huh? Here's A, and B's like up here, here's B. So I have my function, it's a contract, I'm gonna, I'm gonna draw my function here. It's a contraption mapping f, the value of my function g of x at a is between a and b. So this is g of a right here, and you can see it's between a and b, so it's fine. And this is g of b right here, so it's fine. And all of the values in between are also between a and b. If that condition is true, then this function is a contraction mapping. In other words, the range that you pass in, this is the range right here, gets squeezed on the output. It doesn't take the whole range. It now only takes a subset of the range. And so when we do our fixed point iteration, our, our, our resulting values will get squeezed closer and closer and closer to the fixed point. 
That's why fixed point iteration works. So hopefully um, this will become more clear when we do the code section of the video, which we're gonna go to now. So here we are in the section of the code that simulates the seaweed. And you can see that we do some things with buoyancy and some forces and acceleration. And then we eventually calculate a new position for the seaweed, um, for, this, for a single length of the seaweed, a single section of the seaweed. But after we did all these physics calculations, there's no guarantee that the length of our new section of seaweed with the new position is the length that we want it to be, this seaweed link length. So we're going to do a fixed point iteration, and it's going to be exactly the, the formula that um, it's on the screen now that we just talked about. Uh, so that is, we're, and we're just going to do the parts in square brackets right now. Um, so 2L squared over, and then like we discussed, we can get the length of S squared, S is the second section, by doing a dot product with itself. And then finally, um, plus L squared. So that gets us the part in the square brackets, which is a floating point number, which is a, um, a scalar value. And in order to get the new section length, we have to take the old section length and multiply by that scalar number. Uh, and then we can continue with the rest of the calculations. We, uh, we have the new section length, so we add it to the lower link position to get the new normalized position, and then we update that. And so this should be everything that we have to do. So let's build it and thumb over to the debugger and run it. And here we are. Our forest of seaweed, and it it even interacts with you. Pretty cool. So that is uh, our first in practice use that we have seen of um, root finding functions. Well, I suppose um, I suppose that fixed points aren't technically root finding, but you can, since we discussed, you can convert any problem in fixed point to a root finding function. It's, it's pretty much the same thing. So next week, or right now, if you're watching the stream, we are going to go over the last and most powerful root finding technique, which is Newton-Ratson iteration. Super exciting. See you then.